Dub music is a subgenre of reggae that started in Jamaica in the late 1960s. Dub consists of stripped down instrumental tracks known as versions. These versions are manipulated and reshaped using various effects, particularly echoes and delays with vocals dropping in and out of the mix. Only got into dub music as a result of, um, I suppose it's just a love of music, you know, generally. Reggae's always been my thing, and reggae is like the foundation of dub music, so it's only natural. Basically, from going to school, you know, I grew up in the 70s and like early 80s, you know, dub music and reggae music was very popular at the time, around these sort of areas like Hackney and, you know, I'm in London. So basically, that's how I really got into it. I mean, I'm old school, man. I've kind of always been around it, really. Different genre of music, as a life goes by, but I've always been around the roots of music thing, so I've always been involved in it at some kind of level. And so, it's been a long time I've been around it, too. Really. Myself, I was born into sound system through my father and stuff, and just pursued it ever since, you know what I mean? It's just been one of my greatest passions, really. Influences, oh, it has to be the dub pioneer himself, King Tubbies, you know? The main one has got to be King Tubby's really. Dub music was created by Osborne Roddick, also known as King Tubby, who was working as a disc cutter at Treasure House Studios. Because King Tubby's um, stumbled upon dub through experimenting, you know, so yeah, we like that. For dub music, he was like the top man. I couldn't really beat him, you know, King Tubby's jamming scientist. That, that was the studio for I me, mean, the best sound. King Tubby's scientist, uh, mad professor, Certain other people yeah. like that. Dennis Bryan, Bob Marley, obviously. Don't inspire too many people. Dennis Bryan is, is really, I have to repeat the man's name. Dennis Bryan really is very inspirational. Not just his voice, the whole thing behind it, but his spirit, his soul, you can feel it come through. The label was probably conceived years ago, but it actually manifested with the first release in 97. 1989. 21 years ago, I think it is. 21 years, something like that. Yeah, long time ago. He's coming, he's coming, yes, he's, he's, he's coming, he's coming, children beware, the Lord is coming. If you want to be precise, about 12, I remember the time, the drumming on the ironing board. First it started with the drums first, the beat, it started from there. It's a real story, real, real, on the ironing board with two combs. It started from there really still, I like this music. Before that, I didn't go back even further than that and say when I first saw Bob Marley's Natty Dread album. I remember that clearly, distinctively, like yesterday. My brother came home from the market with that petticoat lane. And when I saw the image of Bob, I was, I was, I was at the age anyway, but I was a young man at the time, and I saw the image, and I didn't know really much, you know what I mean? I was a young youth, but it was powerful enough, and it would stay with me, so it don't surprise me, I've come around, I'm still doing this to this day. I actually started in my house, so I started a little studio, uh, basically in my house, but the first time I played a tune, really, was with Nick Manassa, and it was like in his little bedroom, we had a little four track, and yeah. Just started making music on the four track and it sounded good. And decided just to press it and see what happens. Sound systems consisting of powerful speakers, a DJ and a selector are an integral part of the dub scene. The sound systems like Shaka, um, Tubby's and Tebby, certain sound systems that are just stuck to the roots and the dub for all these years. You just follow them over the years and it just keeps drawing you in, bringing you in kind of thing. From the onset of reggae, the sound systems have been uh, the great advertiser for the music. Without the sound system, the music don't get popular, the music don't get known. Uh, producers cannot test uh, the rhythms they've made. Musicians cannot, cannot see what impact their, their chords they play have on people out there. Very important really because most of that tunes we make doesn't really get played on the radio too time. Sound system is like a vehicle, you know? That plays it and lets everybody hear it. The whole thing really centers around sound system. The whole dub thing is like, you know, it's part of the thing. Sound system, dub music, all goes together. The internet has affected the music scene positively, but has also had a negative effect by making it easy to download music illegally. There's more connectivity around the world, you know. You can advertise something in seconds. So the internet is a blessing that way. It's affected very good in one way. But in the other way, when people download all these tunes for free, it's not so good. But for promotion and getting the music out there and for people to listen to it, it's fantastic. The only downside of it is the culture of file sharing. The culture of file sharing 
uh, is bringing up generations who not who don't know about acquiring music legally because it's just all so easy to share files, you know. And we need people to buy the music instead of like uh, just downloading it for free. You know, that's I think one of the main problems with music now is that a lot of people are making it, but there's no real reward financially. And even though we love doing music and it's great, we still have to have, to have some sort of financial backing for, to enable us to live bills and whatever. So, you know, that's a lot which a bit more sales. It won't go mainstream because the same thing, no big companies don't want to pick it up. Mm. Yeah, if you use dub in like jungle or dubstep or something like that, the mainstream will pick it up because it's a money maker for you. Yeah. I've been doing this for 20 years and really it's, it's got bigger, but it's, it's never been that popular. You know? It's never been like a, in fashion, as it were, like dubstep is now, like jungle was, like two step or garage or any of them kind of dancey things. You've got dubstep, you've got jungle, all these engineers have crossed over to Radio 1, and, but not dub. I really don't know why. The roots music has always been the sufferest music. Licking out against injustice, you know, uh, unjust governments, you know, stuff like that. So it's a, it's a rebel music. You know, with the dub and the roots, it's got such a, a spiritual aspect to it as well. Yeah. Most yeah. of the major companies don't really want to take up that, that side right. of it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because it can be very political, very spiritual. Do you see what I'm saying? It can be an eye opener for a lot of people. Some people are just like rebel music. And, music yeah, like, rebel music. They want to call it that. You know what I'm saying? Like a rebel culture yeah. kind of thing. And it's like, you know, the mainstream don't really want to take that up. You know what I'm saying? Because they can't see no money in it. So yeah. it's not for them. So as long as Roots Music is based on reality, lyrically, the powers that be, meaning the major labels of the world, because they've got a choke on what's promoted, what gets big and what doesn't get big. As far as they're concerned, they want um, the gist of most music to be just party and have a good time. They can't take reality, they can't take rebellion. So Roots Music is here for that. I find as well that with the dub and the Roots Music, it's got you know, a much more of a positive message. It's not about yeah. killing and, you know, singing about people's mums and all this kind of stuff, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's a positive thing, do you know yeah. what I'm saying? As long as Roots Music stays on that, on them realms, it'll never go out of vogue. The world will always need it. The world always needs love. The world needs uplifting and the rest of it. Yeah, and, and Roots Music brings that. Children of the most high.